Good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Manette Riordan here with Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette, where we look at all the different ways we can use art as creative process to grow, to heal, to relax, to play. I am all about making art that is both beautiful and meaningful. And this is the kind of work that I do often with my clients in my one-on-one -on -one private practice to really help them integrate everything that's happening in their lives, to seek wholeness again, and to reconnect and discover their process. And this week on Painting in Your PJs Live with Minette, I have been exploring intuitive collage. And this morning I wanted to come in and respond to a page in this magazine that I'm working with. Good morning, Tori. I wanted to respond to a page in this magazine that already has an image on it that I thought was very interesting. And I also like this circle that was kind of up here as well. But there's something about this woman sitting here and having her portrait painted for posterity's sake. And it was very interesting, the story that was told, good morning, Judy, about this particular, so this was a portrait and from an article about Holland. It says the, the real power in Holland lay not with the noble families, but with the rich solid burghers. This couple never knew how well they chose when they asked a young painter named Rembrandt to do their portrait. He must have pleased them with his careful attention to the fine texture of their stiff black clothes and the starch delicacy of their ruffs. Such men and women of substance created the first bourgeois state and set a social pattern for the Western world to follow. So it's so interesting to think about these people during Rembrandt's time getting their portraits painted, being sort of the onset of the, the bourgeois, the, the middle class. But there's just something about this woman that I found really appealing. And things tend to mix together in my mind. So I'm just whiting out the rest of the image here. Um, and I'm working in this recycled Horizons magazine, which was an art magazine. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And I was, I'm re-listening right now to one of my favorite books, which is called A Hidden Wholeness by Parker Palmer. And I love the work of Parker Palmer and I love working with his process of creating circles of trust. And I was listening to the book while I was doing some of my own creative work this morning. I was up nice and early and had lots of time for some creative play. But he was talking about how we can use art, poetry, or song to invite our soul to speak. And for me, that's what the process of intuitive collage is all about, is inviting the soul to speak. And so I was kind of flipping through the, the book here. I have a huge stack of images that I pulled. And I was kind of trying to decide, where did I want to go with this figure of this woman? And I'm not sure, but I'm going to start some images. So sometimes when we're working in old books, Good Morning Yvonne, um, or recycled books, we don't have to pull all the images from the books, right? Like sometimes we can leave some of them in. And in this particular Horizon magazine, there were quite a few really beautiful ones. In the last one I did, there was a whole article about Juan Miro, who's one of my favorite uh, abstract painters and Spanish painters. And uh, this magazine has some really interesting images to come as well. But there was something about this woman that spoke to me. I was thinking, am I just going to gesso over this page and fill it? Am I just going to leave the whole portrait? But I wasn't drawn to the portrait of the, the gentleman figure back there. And I have 
I think this was a foamy stamp and I was playing with some stamping. So I'm just going to start sort of ripping and tearing images. And this is how we invite our soul to speak, is not by trying to think our way through it, but to find inspiration that helps us go within. And so again, something about this woman having her portrait painted, and I also found in my big messy, so this is all the stuff that I pulled out this morning to play with, and I think there's a few pages in here. And I think this was in a stash of things from my great aunt um, when she passed away, and it was in her sewing box. And they're like little bits of recipes, cottage cheese dishes, sweet potatoes. Uh, some of them had little remedies, automania. Interesting. This is um, this is actually a little poem that feels like an obituary. But I love a recipe for rusks. Um, I don't even know what a rusk is. And the measurements are two teacups of light bread, a teacup of granulated sugar. How fascinating is that? So some of these old little pieces feel like such a treasure <clears throat> and um, that they want to get lie hominy. How dear hope. So this is a, um, a, a column that was being writ to, written to somebody. But so I'm thinking that some of these little bits Brown Betty, a tale with a bad moral. They just crack me up. Um, this must have been from something handwritten, but maybe some of these little bits and pieces of the old want to be in here on this. Um, these don't feel, I also felt very drawn to maybe greens and forest colors this morning. Such a sweet find. And I have actually a cloth bag that has this old book falling apart that has home remedies for all kinds of things that also came from her. Such a treasure. So I've got a forest path here. So I pulled a lot of green nature images. This is a, a, a gel print that I made and was playing with. I love gel printing <clears throat> and will often spend a day just capturing gel printing, but this feels like maybe it wants to be on that page. There were some butterflies. I think I had shared some of this before. My friend Mary Correa, who on YouTube is Mary Correa Studios, she taught this really fun way to get our own handwriting onto fabric. This is just some cheesecloth, and this makes the most amazing collage, creates some beautiful texture. So I thought this might be an interesting way to get some of my own handwriting in there. I've got some bluebirds here. I also liked this portrait of this guy. Don't know why. Don't think he's related to this collage. So this just sort of, you know, poking through things. I was really drawn. This is a restaurant somewhere in Los Angeles where the woman loves plants. You can see that the place is overflowing with plants. So again, being drawn to that green. But from another page in this same magazine that I had ripped out was a portrait of, here's an artist actually painting a portrait. <clears throat> so it's a painting of an artist. I love this, right? Like the talk about the layers. Um, a painting of a painter painting a portrait. So, so many layers. Actually, I love the, the fabric in this big drape over here. So he definitely feels like he needs to be in the picture. So I might start here with him and see, <clears throat> excuse me, where we can get to. So these layers, when I think about inviting the soul to speak and how I use collage to do that. It is always about the layers <clears throat> and about cutting images away <clears throat> from their backgrounds and putting them together in new ways that we start to create the meaning and allow the story to unfold. So much of intuitive collage, whether it's soul collage, journey circles, or 
working in an art journal like I am is about just seeking those unconscious stories that are wanting to kind of rise to the top. Good morning, Blanca. Rainy morning in LA again. Oh my goodness, you guys have had so much rain this year all over California, and I know it's needed. And Avon, you're in Bakersfield. It's probably really good to have rain up there as well. And good morning, Kay. Great to have you here. So again, just loving. Here's now this new version of this woman sitting for a portrait and again that meaning about how these burgers in Holland sat to have their portrait painted by young unknown painters like Rembrandt who became not so unknown and I'm kind of curious I'm curious about this sort of luxurious old curtain drape here I really love this woman here as well. It's interesting, she's holding a book and it looks like some kind of a trumpet. So she's probably gonna get saved or definitely get saved for something else. So starting to bring that story together. I'm gonna see if I can move this light up here just a little bit so I'm not getting so much glare on that image. I don't know if it's bugging you guys, but it's definitely bugging me a little bit better. All right, so now this is a very dark picture that's starting to come to, together here. So those flowers don't feel like they kind of fit the theme anymore. And do I still want these greens in the background they feel like quite a contrast to the rest of the image I'm wondering if I just want to come in and paint the background so intuitive collage remember doesn't have to be a hundred percent collage it can also include painting stitching lots of other methods Okay, so it is kind of interesting to have the contrast of the green here in the background. So I'm just doing some fiddling and some thinking about the story that's wanting to emerge here. And I'm kind of maybe thinking, what did I do with that piece of gel print? and some of these other bits and pieces that were in here as well. So this is a, it's like trying on clothes, right? We have to audition our different pieces and see how the story is unfolding and emerging. So this is kind of interesting. And uh, you can't see it in the in the light. There you go. This has copper in the background, so it's very shimmery. I love, love, love copper paint, which is making me think maybe even this needs some more copper in the background. All right, so I'm wanting to... So I think I'm going to save these. Those aren't feeling like they want to be on the page. So again, I'm just auditioning all these different things. Those are way too bright for this page. Looking at what else that I have going on here, there is something about bringing in one of these butterflies. Me too. I love gel printing, Tori. Thank you. I feel like it's definitely the best choice for the page. And butterflies are always about transformation, and so this butterfly would need to get painted to kind of match what else is coming. But what would it feel like to have your portrait painted? Would that be a journey of transformation? Every time even I have a photo shoot for my business, I am in that space of transformation, of allowing myself to be seen. 
there's these funny little bugs that keep drawing my attention everywhere too. So there's something maybe about also the, the being studied as if you're under a magnifying glass. So maybe some of these little guys are going to appear somewhere in the, the background. And I always love getting my own handwriting in the page as well. All right, so I am going to trim the edges of this off. I don't think this is going to fill the whole page. But I want to get a clear size, uh, sense of the size. So it's probably going to need some paint around it. I also have these little birdies, which just are, I think, drawing me because they're the same color palette and maybe that same something about I'm just so caught with spring. The bluebirds are back, which makes me super, super happy. Wait, what? We're talking about coffee? Oh, yes, please. I've already had two cups this morning, but definitely feel like I could have a little bit more. So I'm kind of curious how I'm going to best figure out how to get this image. Okay, I have an idea. So I'm like, I want to be able to get the shape of her and cut her around this edge of paper. So let's just come in here with a piece of deli paper and we just want to kind of be able to cut that shape. So a great way to just get that around the page here. I want that background to just tuck right in around the edges of her. How can I have one thing in my hand one second and then like it completely disappears the next? Does that happen to anyone else or is it just me? So again, this is a, an interesting process to see unfolding because I'm using a page that was already in the magazine, right? So I don't have as much flexibility. And I think this was one of those gel prints that came out at the very end after, and I still love all that copper in there, that came out at the very end. All right, we did pretty good with that. We got it a little straight over there. <laughs> Thank you. I feel so much better that it's not just me. All right, so we got that more or less around the edges of her, leaving a little bit of white there. I have a little bit extra that I might add here down to the foreground. Get my giant Uhu stick and I'm just going to glue this piece down and commit, right? So with these background layers, definitely it's about just, sometimes we just have to commit. I have this one dear friend and, uh, she lets her collages sit sometimes for weeks, almost as if they were like little mini stages where she moves things around and tries them on. I'm not always that patient, but yesterday it definitely took me a while to finish up the story and the page. And this is fun. It feels like creating a puzzle out of all of this. 
and I will trim that up a little bit later. So this page is a little bumpy because it already has paint on the other side. So I'm just working to get this down. If I decide I'm going to add paint to this page, I would come back in and put a layer of matte medium over the top of all of this. Loving these sort of darker, moody colors. And I want to get this gorgeous drape in here as well. And it's so interesting whenever we go visit museums, I'm not always super drawn to the work of the old masters like Rembrandt, right? Like it's not my go-to style. Looking for the, I'll just let the top of that page there stay white. Get that way over there in the edge. But I do, I'm feeling drawn to this sort of old-fashioned image. And at the, the time, like, she's quite a large woman, although it's hard to know how many clothes she has on. And there is that sense of, you know, wealth in largeness that has certainly disappeared today. Okay, and now what happened to our painter? I know he's right here somewhere. And again, the story that's feeling like it's showing up and wanting to be seen and witnessed here is a story of emerging, of really allowing ourselves and our souls to be seen. Okay, you found your quilting ruler in the recycle bin. <laughs> well, I'm glad you hadn't taken the recycling out yet because I know that would not be a fun thing to have to replace. Mm -hmm. So again, the story that seems to be emerging here is one of allowing myself to be seen and how challenging it can be to allow ourselves to be seen. All of us, I had a, uh, a beautiful catch-up call with a girlfriend yesterday and we were talking about our work and our businesses and she said her marketing plan for this year was just to be more of herself and I love that right just like how can we show up more and more and more in the just the light and the being of our true selves and I think that's so true for us as artists even if we're just doing that work for our own personal growth and satisfaction is to think about how can I bring more of myself to the page? How can this page be that true reflection of my soul, of my soul's longing, my soul's truest expression? And in my one-on-one -on -one work with women, it's one of the things that so often we work through and the challenge that they come to me with is this answering that question of who am I? Who am I? All right, just bringing in a little more of that green to allow this to just flow over the, the page here. And it's kind of interesting to take these old pictures and combine them with this gel print and it's an interesting combination. Okay, I'm glad it's a useful question. How can you be more of yourself? And what I love about intuitive collage and inviting our soul to speak on the page is through that process of self-discovery, it gives us courage to then 
do more of that off the page as well. Okay, I have a lot of little extra bits kind of floating around around the edges once it's all dry. I will come back and trim up all of these little edges. Sometimes I just fold them over for the moment so I can just kind of see the whole page. Interesting page evolving. I never know where this journey is going to take me. So all I knew was I wanted to create something. <laughs> Maybe it's portrait of the artist as a middle-aged woman, since that's where I am, right at 58 in that exploration of who am I today. I am not the same as I have been in the, the past, nor do I want to be. But that doesn't always mean that I know who it is that I'm becoming today. And I am going to stick some of these creepy little bugs on here. They are just saying they need to be part of the story. And again, I think this is what in the past when they, they did painted portraits and you would sit for hours and hours, it must have felt, at least to me, like being... under someone's microscope. Mm, I love that. Speak kind words to your soul. Yes, beautiful. And I would allow your soul to speak them back to you. Allow your soul to speak them back to you. Okay, I don't love the bugs on there. That's not the story I want to tell. So I'm just going to stick them on this deli paper over here. Either that or I need to fussy cut them out. I think I didn't like the white around the background. Wondering if these birds are coming in here to be part of the story. And I love this bird is sort of looking on, watching what's happening. I love this is a very old fashioned image. So this butterfly is not going to work on here. I would have to paint it up, but I know that in my box down here this morning I saw another old-fashioned bird picture. My daughter and I found an old Audubon book that had uh, amazing bird illustrations, and um, we've been cutting that up and making photocopies. I also have this little guy sitting here who's the right colors. All right, and I think that's the page. Like, how simple was that that came together? Again, this, like, there's all these watchers, right? All these watchers. So she's sort of the center of the story here. And she's being witnessed in this process. So very interesting collage. Again, all of these invite me to sit with them. I keep flipping back through from the ones I've created this week, or, you know, I will leave this one just sitting open on my table here until tomorrow, and just seeing that the story will continue to unfold. But there's something about being witnessed and seen that feels like the, the core of the story. So a fun way to just allow that image to speak and to tell its own story. So that one came together fast and really simple. I love that it was inspired by what was already here. And I'm feeling like I want to maybe just take a little time to just play with some more collage this morning. I have a really light schedule this week, so I have lots of time for making art, which makes me happy. I'm still so happy with this one from yesterday and sitting with Marion's Living the Question. All right. So another way that I love to start a page is just with 
lots of bits and pieces of collage and using up what is just lying around on my desk. So I'm just going to go with a different way to let my soul speak this morning, which involves just being a little more abstract and in the creative play. Hey, buddy, you need to come say hi. Come on. Yeah, my big tubby cat trying to get up in my lap. All right, so let me find, so I'm going to use an old brush here. So I am going to come in with my matte medium this time for this page. And start to get these images down. And again, these are just bits and pieces that are lying around on my table. Actually, I like the, there's little butterflies on the back side of that, so I'm going to put it down that way. And I'm going to get matte medium. This is, I can hardly reach the table with this giant cat in my lap. It's hilarious. And I know he won't stay long, and he's purring really loud, but he's not being helpful. All right, buddy, off you go. He's like, I don't want to go. Yep, same, more of those same little butterflies. And I'm just going to move around the page. And my goal here is going to be to just fill this whole page with little bits of collage. And I'm thinking that I want to do it all with these nice neutral earth tones. And so again, if I start to look for connections between, okay, why am I being drawn to earth tones? Is it connection with nature that I'm seeking? My husband and I went for a beautiful walk at one of our favorite local ponds yesterday and saw a female merlin, which is a, a really small hawk uh, type of falcon. And uh, it was so beautiful to just sit. And she sat in a tree preening herself for a while and then flew off. So we got to sit with the energy, but the colors here are still just starting to see some green, but still a lot of these earth tones. So I'm going to come in with some of this strips of this muslin as well. I need to find the, the link to this video and share it because this was such a fun process. All right, and I'm just going to create, this is such a great way to start a journal page is by, and you notice I didn't gesso this, so instead of gesso, I'm actually using collage to, to build up the layers of this page. And starting this way and covering a whole page with collage allows a different story to unfold in your art journal. So I highly recommend not tossing all the little tiny scraps and bits, but holding on to things. And by adding this muslin in here, I'm also creating texture on the page, which I love. And again, I'm using lots of matte medium. I'm almost to the end of this jar which is why I'm using a brush. Normally, I do not like to stick my paintbrushes in my matte medium. It's really hard to get them clean, but this is an old kind of stiff, worn out brush. So again, I'm getting that matte medium both underneath and on the top. And I have all these little stringy bits. Yes, the matte medium is way better than glue. If you're going then like Mod Podge, Mod Podge gets very sticky when it's dry, and so the pages of your art journal can stick together. Um, I think I'm going to leave those little stringy bits in there for more texture. And if you're going to do wet media over the top, then I think it's important to make sure so these are, this is an interesting piece. I think maybe we'll just stick that whole piece in there. If 
you're going to paint over the top, matte medium is by far the, the best to do that because it's basically like acrylic paint without the pigment in it. And again, this is one of those ways to bring more mindfulness into our creative practice is when we're in these stages of the process that just require us to be here in the moment. I'm not trying to create anything specific. This little bit of green is wanting to kind of start to peek in here. Letting that story unfold. So many of my unfolding stories end up being about connection to nature. Lately, they've definitely been about my longing for some green. It's coming, and the trees are getting close. So this was the leftover page that I cut the artist out of that was painting a portrait. So it's getting, giving me some of those same colors that I'm going with. Again, remembering that in this early stage, I have no destination in mind. I'm just paying attention to what am I being drawn to. What's the story that might be emerging here? And building up the layers, and these layers might get completely painted over. Let's see, grab a little scraper here and smooth some of this out. It's like the foundation of a building. We often don't think about the, the foundation. We know it's there. It's what's holding the, the building up, or we don't think about the what's underneath the surface of our walls and our floors. It's kind of the same idea right, is just building up that foundation on which, from which everything else will emerge. And I'm even kind of liking these words over here that say elements of drama. And I might leave those words on the page. So maybe the message in that is, you know, where is my soul needlessly creating drama sometimes to get attention or feel like it has to create some drama in order to be heard and seen? I'm not big on drama. I don't have friends who create drama. I like things that uh, are deep and meaningful, but not necessarily dramatic. OK, that feels like enough of the brown. I'm going to want to maybe come in and start putting in some layers of color. I've got this fun little painty piece of paper here. This was from someone else's Art in Art Journal magazine by Stampington, which is one of my favorite magazines. Great inspiration for art journaling there. And I also like this image of this woman who's kind of in the same palette. And I think this is, uh, she's in a, a brew pub, 
but love all this beautiful handwriting and gears kind of all in the same color is where I'm going so she's probably going to end up on that on the page and I'm deciding is she going to end up underneath or on the top so I'm not interested in the part about the beer so much so let's just put her down on here and she might become part of the story or maybe not All right, time for a new jar of matte medium. It's a big piece, so I want to make sure I get her down. So this is my favorite matte medium. I bought some golden when it was on sale, but I really love the Liquitex. It's a, a little bit thinner. I think it goes on a little bit smoother. And Michaels often has great sales on Liquitex paints and mediums. You can also, I'm sure, get it on Amazon. All right, I just want to make sure I get her down nice and smooth. And again, this is about thickening up that page so it's not so flimsy, right? I'm working on these glossy magazine images. So gesso is a way to do that, but so is putting this base of collage down. And I love the, the pattern in this piece of this image, which is some kind of window covering here too. So maybe I want to get a little more dramatic patterns happening, but it also has a little bit of that blue in the background. So watching the color palette emerge is always part of the story and asking myself on a day-to-day -day basis, what color does my soul need today? What color does my soul need today? And clearly mine is wanting earth tones. We've got a little green and a lot of blue, but also these gorgeous burnt umbers, some blacks and tans, very earthy. I love this path picture. This is one that I printed out from online. I want to cover up those little bits of words there. I also love that the, the Liquitex is in a squeeze bottle, which the Golden is not, making it much, much easier to, to get out. All right, so here I have an interesting page unfolding with lots of bits of collage. Not sure where I'm going with this. I kind of like this figure down here. The other thing I like about matte medium is, you know, I can start painting on it pretty quickly with the acrylics. You don't have to wait for it to dry. I'm also interested in this guy sort of looking off into the, the distance here. And again, that seeking those inner horizons might be a theme that would emerge from him. This looks like somebody's beautiful mural. I'm just going to fussy cut him out and see, give him a little bit of an audition here. So interesting stories that start to evolve. So here, if I paint out the background around her, she's looking away. He's looking off into the distance. So there's that idea of seeking, right? So the theme of seeking is starting to evolve here. Kind of like the 
patterns of these icicles too. So I'm just going to keep layering up the collage, right? There's at this point still no destination. This might be one where I get this base layer down in and then come back tomorrow to figure out the next steps, but let's just see where this wants to take us today. What are other people working on today? So Marion, are you still working on your collage? Blanca, you usually play along. I always love hearing what other people are creating. So the idea of this is that you guys come and bring whatever you're working on and create along with me. Nope, too big. I also have this woman that's been sitting around for a long time and she might make a nice silhouette or I might put her on the page and then paint over her to make her mine. I don't know if she quite goes with this guy here. So the thing about putting images down with matte medium that you want to remember is that they're not movable. The nice thing about glue stick is that they're movable. All right, so not sure what's going to happen with that. Again, I'm just playing with what's on the table in front of me. I do want to bring in some of these little bits of history. and add, again, this is all in that same color family. No, Diego, you're fine, go away. Silly cat. They only want to like sit on top of me when I am on Zoom calls. Or when I sit in the evening to watch TV, I can't even sit for like 30 seconds before I have Georgia in my lap and Diego on the other side of me. They would they like to both be in my lap, but it's a little challenging. All right, so just bringing in, planting some of this history in here. And these older pieces of paper, you definitely want to seal them up really well over the top with that matte medium, because if you don't, they will tear and rip later on in the painting process. And I know exactly where I want to go next with this. It's time to bring in some paint and start to paint some things out. Making sure I'm not gluing all my pages together. And I'm very drawn to this sort of burnt sienna, raw sienna, a 3D flower painting for your mother-in-law, 98, woohoo, what a celebration, happy birthday to her today, being comfy and cozy in bed, haven't even had coffee yet, wow, that's amazing, like I don't make it more than like three minutes after waking up without getting some coffee in me, thinking this is going to need some yellow in it, And uh, let's see, we're getting down to the end of that hour. So I think I'm going to add some paint and then I'm going to let it sit. And maybe I want to play with this copper, which the thing I love about copper is that it's translucent. But I also... kind of feel like this raw sienna is a match, but I'm feeling the shiny. And again, that shiny might get completely painted over at a later time. But I'm going to start there and see what begins to unfold. And I'm also noticing that I've covered up almost all of my handwriting, so maybe a little more of that might want to come back. I don't know why it feels important to get some of my voice in there. Coffee hour. Do you still have your 
grandbaby is with you, Judy. And thank you for sharing your coffee hour with me. That's pretty special. All right. And I'm going to let this hang over the edge a little bit and just sort of fill this spot here. They leave Friday. I'm sure it's been a wonderful week, and I'm sure you'll be glad when you get to send them back home as well. So fabric, most of the time, is super easy to tear, except when you get down to some of those little bits and edges, like where I'm at. And I'm loving kind of this rough edge on there. Just continuing to play. And again, feeling like a lot of this is going to get painted out and the, the story here is going to be, like the other one, pretty simple. So the other one felt like being under observation, under a microscope a little bit as she's having her portrait painted. This one feels like this idea of seeking, going both within and without. Just trying to get those, again, down there super, super flat. That one doesn't quite want to flatten out. There we go. So important to have some kind of scraper tool around when you're working with collage and matte medium. So what's going to happen? And this is a super inexpensive, just artist loft copper. Uh, but it works great. I also have a couple of beautiful coppers from the Nova paint that I love. And this is going on pretty thick because I put a lot of it down there. So I'm actually going to come back and thin that up. And again, I'm going to leave that elements of drama there. And I want to still be able to see what's underneath. I think it's one of the reasons I picked the, the copper is I want to hold on to some of the, the patterns that are under there. So I may even take a baby wipe and push some of that back. And there may be places where I let it be more opaque. And this may be all this page needs, we'll see. So again, an interesting story. I feel like this one definitely needs some journaling over the top. I've got some interesting texture where some of the, the threads of these bits of fabric are hanging. And I don't know that I would have chosen the copper unless I had started with all those neutral tones under there. But again, the contrast in the figures, the looking out, the looking in, right, that both are versions of seeking. And I'm going to lose the elements of drama. I don't like drama. So it needs to say this piece, if I were to give this piece a name, and I've left the journaling prompts in the description, if I were to give this piece a name, the, the name of this piece would be the seeker. And looking off into the distance, looking within, and then looking straight ahead. There's an interesting maybe story. I don't usually have that many figures in a piece. So I'm still not sure. Maybe she's going to go on this partner page. 
over here and be part of a different story. So what I'm noticing is that I definitely want to do some journal writing on this page, but wanting to bring in a little bit more color as well. And my favorite combo of colors with that copper. I'm going to bring in some teal blue here, and I'm just going to use the other page over here as my palette for the moment. But there was just this little bit of blue behind him. And so maybe I'm just going to come in and add some marks to this page. And playing with mark making, I'm still not covering everything up. I can still see texture and elements. And I'm maybe going to come in and outline him with some big, bold black and make him stand out a little bit more. Maybe even just gonna, this is the place where I'm really just allowing myself to play. Interesting, those words are sneaking back in there. We may end up in a, another messy middle state here. And again, this is one that is going to probably just sit here for a bit. Thank you. It's one of my favorite color combos. And it's going to need to maybe evolve, but it's definitely wanting to have some of these other colors come in. This is a yellow ochre. I love yellow ochre. And I'm feeling like she's wanting some something happening. Down here around her too, like almost like she's just kind of maybe hidden. That reminder that we have to go within before we can go without. So always just giving yourself permission to play. Remember, everything is paint overable. So at any moment in time, I could come back with my gesso and white out the background like I did on the other page and start all over. And again, this sort of mark making this way is a great way to move energy. I'm noticing the, you know, the direction and the type of marks sort of very sharp marks. So again, just creating more emotion. Yay, I'm glad you gifted yourself some Nova paints. I hope you enjoy playing with them. They're a great company. All right, I'm thinking maybe this is going to want some stencils, and I actually grabbed some stencils this morning. I didn't know what it was that I was going to do, but I grabbed one of my favorite stencils, this sort of leafy pattern, and I'm going to bring a little black in here. No, Georgia, no paint water for you. And I've got my big thing of black gesso here, which will work just fine. Let me get her out of the way. So I love this page. It's got all kinds of messy stuff on it already. Grab a makeup sponge. 
little bit of paint on there. Dab that off. I don't want this paint to be on super, super thick. But again, it feels like the sort of this emerging. Yeah, it needed the, the contrast. And again, I think I'm going to go in and outline him with some black paint. So see, I got too much paint on that one, and we got it all blobby. And so now I have that uh, paint on my, looking for my, I was looking for my baby wipes, but I'll just take a tissue. So I have paint on both the front and the back of the, the stencil. And so I want to make sure I clean that up or I'll get a really messy stencil the, the next time. And I can also just grab a piece of scrap paper and just blot that a little bit and lift some of that up. It's a little messy, but I got a cool print on this page. So that'll get used as collage in something else, and that's helping just sort of clean that up a little bit. Nice. All good. Okay, let's get some other leafy shapes in here. So remember that when you're creating stories in this way, that just coming back in with the the contrast of black and white to create highlights. She's definitely just wanting a lot of this leafy bits around her. So again, you know, anytime adding these natural elements are all about growth. Let's put a few over on this side. I love all these different shapes. I think this was a stencil that was created by my friend Andrea Shebelu. And I'm just letting them layer and mix on the page. I'm not trying to keep them separate. If we were looking at a bushy area, right, it would be completely mixed up and you couldn't necessarily tell the, the paints one from another. Sort of liking these berry shapes. Also, I love doing black stenciling like this because then I can come back in any time with white gel pen and add layers and design. So I love that now she's really hidden down here where he's very much in this outer very different type of landscape. But he also needs some of that, just a little bit of this black in here to kind of land him a little bit. So almost like a, a fence line across there. So I'm all of a sudden I'm creating separation between the two stories, which is just interesting again just paying attention to what's evolving here and what's happening between the two and maybe I'm going to look for some ways to bring those two stories together maybe he's also in this So again, I'm just totally in curiosity here. No idea where I'm going. This stuff definitely is not going to be finished today. So it's one I'll come back and I'll either finish up later today or tomorrow. And tomorrow will be our final day of playing with intuitive collage. And next week we're already into April and April is National Poetry Month, one of my favorite months. So I think I'm going to do a month all about poetry and incorporating poetry into our creative process and how it is a just really amazing way to, again, invite our soul to speak. 
So poetry is a powerful point of entry. Bye, Blanca. Have a great day. All right, so this needs to get super dry. It feels complete for now, but not complete for good. So I am going to pause here with this piece, and I will see you guys for our final day of intuitive collage tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Time. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Judy. That means the world to me. Thank you, Blanca. You're welcome for the dose of creativity. Um, have a beautiful rest of your day, my friends, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.